For more on the escalating military offensive in Syria, I'm joined by Sarah L. Deeb, a reporter for the Associated Press covering Syria and Lebanon. She joins me now via Skype from Beirut. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So a withdrawal of troops out of northern Syria. What mm -hmm. do you know about how quickly that might happen? And what are the consequences going to be? We don't, we can't imagine how fast this will happen. But once an announcement was made, I think we have to see them leave the area. They have already come under fire a number of times. First, um, before the weekend, when a base, a small observation point in the western part of the border came under fire um, while Turkish and Kurdish fighters were exchanging projectiles. And then this morning, we've seen chaos and advancing Turkish backed forces into the town of Anaisa, which is about 20 miles away from the border. And that resulted in the escape of a number of um, ISIS supporters from a holding area in a displaced people camp. And what I understood from uh, US officials that I'm talking to is that they have no, they could not control, uh, they could not get enough uh, clarity or line of communication with their partners on the ground. And this was a very risky situation, as I was told. For the troops. Talk a little bit more about that. I mean, what is what is the consequences of these hundreds of ISIS families escaping from that camp? We're just receiving reports that a convoy of civilians with a bunch of journalists may have come under fire from a Turkish airstrike or Turkish shells. It's still we're still kind of trying to figure out the details of that. So that's one thing. And then you have pictures of uh, women and children leaving the camp. Uh, where they're being held. This camp had about 900 um, foreign uh, children and their mothers. These are families of ISIS. So what we understood also from officials in the area is that some of the um, people in the camp were um, closeted ISIS supporters. And when this happened, then there was a lot of violence and pushback against the guards and um, against the security that were in there. So while we while this is just really fast moving, what we know is that uh, there is no control over the security of these detention centers. The bigger problem is Al Hol camp, which is further to the east, that has a lot more um, families of ISIS directly. And we've heard last month the leader of the Islamic State ask for um, every supporter of ISIS to try to free these people. So we don't know what kind of um, what kind of consequence it would have, but it's definitely chaos. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of civilians are in harm's way. I mean, can you talk a little exactly. bit about the unfolding humanitarian crisis there? This has been five days, and we have already 130, 000, at least 130,000 uh, civilians fleeing their homes from a stretch of over over 300, um, 300 kilometers, which is about 250 miles. At one point, the U.S. bases were kind of the safe area to be around. But that's clearly not, no longer the case. People are running to their relatives in areas that are further to the south. There's about 20 or so shelters that were set up by the UN and aid, maybe more. I mean, this, this may not be the most updated figure, but shelters for people on the run. But these are people who are running um, while, while fighting is as chaotic as I described. And the U.S. is pulling out. In the meantime, it was always a safety valve of some sort. President Trump has also threatened sanctions on Turkey in the midst of all this. I mean, do we think that's going to happen and what effect might those have? Uh, what we have on the ground is that um, Turkish forces are advancing to establish what they had said they wanted to, which is a 30 kilometer, 19 miles deep uh, safe zone. But what, what we've also seen is that there is there are projectiles and and airstrikes and shelling outside of that zone on the west to the right or the left of that zone and uh, while President Trump a few days ago said that um, if they go too far, there will be harm to their economy i don't think he ever described what too far is, so I wonder if that is that too far or what is too far I'm, it's not clear to us from where we're looking. All right, Sarah L. Deeb of the Associated Press, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.